for years, I stayed away from the idea of writing a textbook. Yeah. Uh, and around 20 years in practice, which is a couple of years ago, I finally started warming up to the idea. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Rhinoplasty podcast with me, Dr. Cameron McIntosh. It is season three. We're coming to you live from Berlin, and I have managed to drag in one of the co-directors of this incredible meeting, the IMR Hiss meeting, uh, the top rhinoplasty societies of the world are around here. And for the second time on the podcast, I've got Sam Most with me. Sam, thank you for being here. Awesome to be here. I've got one question for you. Why wasn't I in season two? Oh, ooh, that's a deep <laughs> one. Uh, oh, dear. Yes, I can't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think it's so great you're doing this. And I'm honored that you're uh, Thanks. having me. And uh, I can't imagine anybody wants to hear me talk anymore after last time. But, you know, it's just great to be here. I love talking about rhinoplasty. I love talking to you. That's so great. whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, so I say to Sam before, and I say, let's talk about the evidence-based medicine group. She said, no, no, it's too too advanced. Let's just chat away. It's I didn't think it was too advanced. I said, nobody wants to hear that anymore. But I'd be happy to talk about it. I think it's a great thing. Yeah. Obviously, it's close to my heart. And I think it's something we all need to think about. Yeah, sure. So Sam, it was uh, taking the listeners back. We saw each other. Uh, about six months ago in South yeah. Africa when we brought you in there and you, Wolfgang, pulled out at the last minute, unfortunately, we ended up having you to do five live surgeries in like 24 hours. <laughs> five live surgeries, yes, yes. But we did it. We did it. Yeah. We did it. It was great. And they it came out great. beautiful. You guys all, I mean, obviously, it was a team effort and yeah. uh, and it was great. And yeah. um, I'm just thankful for the opportunity. It's great to see beautiful country, yeah. beautiful people, good friends. Yeah, and uh, it was my first time there. Yeah, it was a really long trip, as you remember. Yeah. By the way, this guy, I got off, I got off the plane, and he took me straight to the to a boat, <laughs> and we went whale watching. Yeah. I hadn't slept in about thirty hours, and uh, and we just we just took off from there. And you know what? It was worth it. It was just just so much energy, and you you exude so much energy, you know. So it's infectious, and yeah, it's I just uh, made it through. And um, great society you started there. Really yeah. good group of rhinoplasty yeah. surgeons, yeah. young and older. Yeah, we got a group so, of eight eight South Africans that come out to the meeting. Yeah, here. Yes, great. Which is yeah. really amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's great. So I've got a little surprise for you, guys. If those of you who aren't listening, you I mean, or watching the video, I, I, I managed to sneak in a copy of this new book called Comprehensive Rhinoplasty, Structural and Preservation Concepts by Sam P. Most. So Sam, I, I mean, I know you don't like the limelight here, but this is so fascinating. I mean, you've been publishing a lot of papers, etc. But finally, you brought the book out. Yeah, so, yeah, it was. So it was tell the big, listeners about it. It was a big undertaking, you know. For years, I stayed away from the idea of writing a textbook. Yeah, uh, and around twenty years in practice, which is a couple of years ago, I finally started warming up to the idea. Yeah, uh, because I thought, well, it'd be nice to sort of consolidate some of the, my philosophies after two decades of rhinoplasty. Yeah. Listen, we're all students. I'm still learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and also because I think there was a gap in the at least in the textbooks, uh, regarding fusing structural and preservation concepts. Yes. Uh, and so I wanted to have a comprehensive book, which yeah. wasn't three huge volumes or something that someone could get through. Yeah, yeah. It goes through the basics, uh, structural rhinoplasty, how to approach patients, yeah. all the way through preservation and then revision and complex case concepts. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, and so it sort of came together. And my philosophy was also that I wanted to be completely my voice. So... All the people who wrote these chapters with me, and I wrote all these chapters, uh, are my former fellows. Wow! Eh? So they all know okay. they all know exactly how I do things. Yeah. So uh, we, we, I was heavily involved in uh, either completely writing the chapter or co-writing it with them. And and it's sold through QMP. They the publishers. Yes. Eh? yes. Wow! Yeah. Eh? So I'm just yeah. paging through this and and having a look at how many people were actually part of this. Yeah. Where did you find the time? Uh, you know. Um, I've got a supportive team, a supportive group, yeah. a loving uh, family, and I just was able to, to make it happen. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where the time comes from. You know, it's really daunting, these tasks, when you put them in front of you. Uh, yes. But then you split them down into small steps for yeah. anything, as you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you just take one step at a time, and you measure your progress, and eventually you get to the end. 
So tell me a bit more about this stuff. What what were the highlights and what were the lowlights in getting this book together? The I was super excited. One of the highlights was just deciding to take the plunge. Yes. You know, the 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 tough parts are when you're in the in the meat of it and you're just trying to get things done. And then at the end, editing and finally putting it together. Um, organizing the artwork was a big task. Yeah, yeah. We have a wonderful artist, Chris Grallop, who uh, did all this artwork yeah, in there. Yeah. Um, I've worked with her for many years, uh, and this is the first big project we did where we did an entire textbook. She did all the um, illustrations in my lectures and in my uh, publications and journals, uh, but this time she we did the whole textbook, uh, and she's wonderful to work with. And then editing the videos was tough. In the end, I actually did it all myself. So there's also videos included. There are four full full cases in there, and also through the text. When there's a technique, um, there's a tag to a particular part of the of one of the videos that has that technique. Test. So you, for example, lateral curl struck graph, for example, yeah. next to that, there'll be a video tag and you can go and just look yeah. at how to do that, for example, things like that. But that's brilliant. I mean, it's it, it literally, I think in the market, it's needed because there's a lot of complexity in rhinoplasty. Yeah. And if you want to start, like, where do you start? Right. And I think especially if you're thinking about preservation, I think it's good if you don't want to give up all the structural work. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for bringing it up. So now tell me, there's one chapter missing here. though. Um, Beth most, Mrs. Sam most, <laughs> being married to a rhinoplasty surgeon. <laughs> she's not going to watch this, I think. So, uh, no, she's, I mean, we've been together. This is this uh, year will be our 30 year anniversary of marriage wow. and we've also we were together five years before that wow. so we've been together for most of our lives yeah. uh, and um, I'm just super lucky guy I can't think of what it would be like if I hadn't uh, met her and uh, convinced her to be with me <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I, I like the fact that your two daughters but I, I haven't met them but the one I definitely is my favorite already with her beautiful name Oh, yes, Cameron. <laughs> yes, yes, you're reading the dedication. Yeah. Yes, I mean, my, my family means everything yeah. to me, and, and uh, the kids are truly inspiring, you know, my two daughters. I never had sisters, so to see these two girls grow up into young women, you know, and, and do their thing has just been amazing for me. So. so, Sam, the one thing I want to ask you, I mean, this is fantastic, so I'm going to put this book down for a sec, is the, the, how have you found over the last couple of years of uh, bringing in that preservation teaching into into your practice because obviously I mean think you and Dean are really the forefront of the teachers of preservation and Aaron but Aaron's not yeah. necessarily in the academic environment whereas you, you especially you you are how have you managed to try and incorporate that now? Well, it's just like anything else. I mean, I think you have to be really honest about yeah. what you've learned and where you've found you know difficulties and mistakes yeah. and and I think that's the key is transparency. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I think that. You know, one of the important concepts that, that I do teach and lecture about, and I hate the word lecture because it sounds very, you know, condescending or whatever, but yeah. talk about it is that we all are continually learning, right? Yeah. We're yeah. all continually learning. And so if you're static, then then you're it's sort of you're sort of doing a disservice to yourself and to your patients. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I'm always trying to learn new things. Uh, and uh preservation is no different than any of the other things, really. I mean, it, it is a big leap forward. It's a conceptually, you know, after having done conventional humper section for your whole career, then suddenly to have this idea of impacting is, it, it is a sea change. It's very different. But it, yeah. the concept that you're going to continue to learn and then teach what you learn is no different. So uh, I think the keys, though, are, you know, always be skeptical when you're learning. Mm -hmm. You know, don't believe everything you hear, Absolutely. especially from me. But for any from anybody, you know, if anything sounds yeah. too perfect to be true, yeah, then yeah. it really is, yeah, right? Yeah. If someone says you should always do this or never do this unless it's something really obvious, then be be skeptical. And I'm always skeptical, and so I didn't really jump into preservation. It took a couple of years of watching some of these folks yeah, do yeah. the open yeah, preservation yeah. before I did it. And when I talk about it, I I say you know it's not for every single patient. Yeah. Um, I think that preservation is now. A term that can be applied to anything where you're preserving the cartilaginous vault and even somewhere you're partially destroying yeah, it yeah, yeah. and so there's a whole spectrum of different procedures it's not a binary decision between complete resection and complete preservation there's Absolutely. all these different things in between yeah. right so that's really exciting and that's another thing i try to say is it's not a binary decision you you have a lot of different ways yeah, of yeah. treating the dorsum now 
Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's just like anything else, but I think it's an exciting time in rhinoplasty. Yeah. It really is. No, I think yeah. things were getting a little stagnant in the last five years has yeah. really been revolutionary. Yeah. Okay, last topic I want to chat about is schnoss. No, yes. Nah. So two things is, did you think that when you guys first published it and researched it, what, how many, 15, 20 years ago, it would be where it is now? Oh, it was only it was only six years ago. Six years, it feels like. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, 2017. 2017. Well, you know, I saw a need in you know, around 2010. I was thinking there's a need for something like this because yeah. I'd been using the nose questionnaire, but it yeah. really didn't measure any aesthetics. And yeah. there wasn't really a great, uh, and I'm saying with an asterisk, there wasn't really a great, well-validated aesthetic yes. and functional questionnaire. Uh, and so we developed one and we published in 2014, I think it was, called the Rhino Scale. Yes. I can't even remember what the acronym stands for, but it worked out great to Rhino. Uh, and um, and it was soundly rejected by the best journals. Why? Because the validation methodology we used for the psychometrics was the same that had been used for the row and the nose and everything yes. else. But now, in 2014, this was considered dated and not up to snuff wow. scientifically. So keep that in your mind when you use the nose and the row and all these other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then we went back to the drawing board a couple of years later, and I, I enlisted a couple of colleagues who are vastly smarter than I am at the psychometrics, uh, who are world famous for that, and we, we went about doing it again. Wow. And we did it the right way, and it was generated. So to answer your question, I was hoping that it would be something that people would find useful. Yeah. I'm very happy that it's been adopted worldwide. Um, and... Uh, and so, you know, I, 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 it sort of just kind of completely fulfilled what I wanted it to do. And I just hope pe more people can use it. Yeah, but they will. So the other thing around schnoss that I've been wondering is, so it gets published six years ago. 2017, do, yeah. Do you think that possibly there's a, a element that we need to look at in these scoring sheets about social media and the influence that has on patients? I don't know. It's just an idea I've been mulling over and wondering because I think the, the this world is so obsessed with this instant TikToks, Snapchat, quick little and selfie generation. More, and even in the last six years, it's changed a lot. I don't know. It's funny you should mention that because that's something that we're actively pursuing. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> we actually have some validated questionnaires on social yeah. media use that we're starting to okay. use. And we're going to examine that and see what the effect what the effects are and uh, it's it is true it's true i i think it'd be cool to develop something particularly for plastic surgery patients that measures yeah. their social media use but it's more than social media use it's and this is a this is the outside influence thing so i have this equation that i use sometimes in lectures and it's an old equation called um, you know it says uh, happiness equals reality minus expectations mm -hmm. okay yeah and so Happiness is what we both want, surgeons and patients. Yeah. Reality is what you can achieve. Expectations are what they want. Yeah. So unless expect unless your reality is at least matching expectations, you're going to get into a negative number. Yeah. Yeah. For happiness. So, yeah. but expectations. Then this is my my original thought. I broke it down into a complex equation that is the sum of the number of people who influence that person. Okay. Yeah. So this is a sigma n whatever it is. Yeah. And then the lambda is the influence level. Of that, so if there are okay. ten people who influence them, but they're the lambda is a zero, then there's no 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 influence okay. on the expectations. But some people, no matter what they think, they're so insecure. Everything is about what other people think about them. Yes, uh, and this is like social media users to a certain extent. Yes, they want likes, they want so on, or they you know if they're very happy with their nose, but they go home and their husband says it's ugly, I don't like it. I've had this happen. They're happy at three months, four months, but then they meet some new boyfriend who says he doesn't like it or something. And then suddenly, so the influence yeah. of other people is something you really want to measure, not just yeah. social media. So if there's some way we could measure that, uh, that would that be really be cool. Very interesting. That would be very cool. And I think that that would, you know, that goes kind of along with nasal self-esteem, which is question five on the uh, questionnaire. Yeah. You know, how much is your, how much of your self-worth is tied up in your nasal appearance, your esteem? So... Uh, you know, these are all interesting questions to answer. So it's interesting because now you, 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 if I'm correct in understanding of saying how that one person gets influenced by all the 10 people around them, but the, it's the opposite as well. So like, say you die, then it's really bad 
for everybody around you. They're the guys who suffer, but the person who's dead is not suffering anymore. And they say, it's the same if you're stupid. <laughs> it's really bad for you. Are you saying something about me now? <laughs> <laughs> those, those, there the, can be the negative vibe coming yeah. out from, from, dare I say, the patient as well, causing... Well, I mean, yeah. external influence on your happiness is not really healthy, right? So it can work for you as a doctor if you do a bad job and everybody tells the patient that it looks good. But the yes, worst part, yes. the worst part, and they're influenced by that. But you really want someone to just kind of judge things for themselves and have the self confidence to sort of feel that way. And, yeah. And and um, if somebody, you know, all of their self esteem is pulled up, is kind of rolled up into what other people think about them, whether it's likes on yeah. Instagram, how many likes they get, yeah. uh, how many. Friends tell them what a great nose they have. Um, you know, if this affirmation is really that important to them, then it can work really against you. Absolutely. Uh, and it's just not a healthy sign anyway. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that'd be cool to measure. Awesome. Guys, thanks for listening to this legend, Sam Most. Sam, thanks for your time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Have you on the show again, eh? Yeah. God, come, back, come back next week and listen, go out and buy comprehensive rhinoplasty seriously i'm i'm making the pitch here because i think it's a fantastic book eh? and uh, we'll catch up with you guys again next week <laughs>